so welcome students uh, for the series lectures of design of machine elements one uh, so uh, in this today's lecture uh, our aim is to design and develop the beam strength equations for the spur gear tooth so with the starting before this uh, beam strength equations uh, we know very well we are find out the force analysis in the theory of machines elements in subjects so in that force analysis so this case is basically is uh, used for the spur gear trend so in this spur gear mechanisms so basically the two gears is present one gear is a driver and one gear is a driven depends on the applications the maybe the pinion is a driver or maybe the gear is a driver so but in some cases in most cases sorry not some cases in the most cases the small dimension is present for that gear and that gear is considered as the pinion and the bigger size gear is called as the driver so here in your left hand side the photograph of the gear turn is present in yellow color so here the top gear is called as the driving gear it's also called as the pinion and the bottom gear is called as the driver gear and is called as the gear so when the tip of this gear is connected with the other gear and some uh, rpm is present for the pinion and due to the forces or the normal forces is present on the pitch point of that the two teeth then the two forces is present on this gear and these are the forces one is called as a pt is called as a tangential force and is also called as a driving force and the another force is again present on that the gear and these are the radial force and it is also called as the <coughs> uh, radial force is also called as the <coughs> removable force so in that force analysis uh, the we know very well uh, when the uh, tangential force is present on the gear and it is called as the driving force and how to find out this pt so you know the very well the torque transmitting of that gear is nothing but the uh, driving forces pt into the uh, radius of that the gear so in some time cases the pt is nothing but the two times of the total torque divided by uh, the diameter of that the gear right so in this way you can find out the pt and how to find out the pr we know very well the pr is nothing but the relations between the alpha angles and the pt same here for the spur gear mechanisms this pr is equal to uh, pt tangential force into the tan pi and here we know the very well how to find out the resultant force in this case the pn is indicate is the resultant force and we know the very well pn is equal to by this trigonometry pn is equal to pt divided by the cos alpha and here <coughs> in this analysis so for this uh, our aim is to design this per gear based on the beam strength so in this analysis there are this some uh, assumption is present for find out the force analysis and these are as the point of the contact moves so here the point which is there the magnitude of the resultant force pn the changes and this effect is neglected in this analysis even uh, it is assumed that the only one pair of the teeth take the entire load right so in this assembly uh, the three teeth is in engaged but here only one pair of the teeth take the entire load and at a time there are two pairs which are simultaneously in contact and share the load this aspect is neglected in this force analysis even the analysis is valid under the static conditions this force analysis is valid under this static conditions when the gear are running at the very low velocities but in practice there is a dynamic forces in addition to force due to the power transmission and this effect of this dynamic force is neglected in this analysis for the forces 
so right so means our aim is to uh, find out the the dimensions of the teeth uh, based on this uh, process analysis and this process analysis is uh, calculated based on the total speed of that the gear the dimension of the gear as well as the torque transmitting on that the gears so in this way you can find out the pt and the pr here the pr is also called as the separating forces either the radial forces pt is called that as the tangential force and the radial force right so then uh, so move to about the beam strength of this per gear tooth so our aim is to find out the beam strength our aim is to find out the beam strength what is called as the beam strength so if you consider only one uh, tooth is engaged with the other gear then uh, the total load is acting on that the tooth and the, maybe this tooth is fail against the bending failure so with respect to that our aim is to find out the bending strength of that the gear tooth and this equation is based on the levis this equation is based on the levis uh, the analysis of this bending stresses in gear tooth is already done by the welfare levis in his research paper and he is investigate the strength of the gear tooth uh, and is submitted at the engineers club of the philippines in the 1892 even this such type of the levis equation is considered as the basic equations in the designs of the gear uh, so in the levis equations uh, what are the basic assumption is presents and how the uh, how to find out the beam strength for that this per gear so initially it is consider the one tooth of that the gear is like as the cantilever is like as the cantilever beam as shown in this figure so we are consider only one tooth and it is like as a cantilever beam so it means at the dedendum of that uh, gear and at the top flank of the gear when we are consider this and the, the pt is the driving force or the tangential force is present on the flank of that the gear tooth and here the b is mentioned is a width of this gear tooth and t is a thickness of the gear measured at the uh, random of that the gear so the basic assumption is presents for derive these levis equations and this uh, assumptions is like uh, the effect of the radial components pr either is also called as a separating forces because this forces is towards the axis of the gear for the pinion it is coming in the upward directions and for the gear it is coming in the downward direction so based on that direction this forces is also called as the separating forces which induces the compressive stresses these are forces induce the compressive stresses towards the axis of the gear and here we are going to neglect this radial components pr in this equations then the another assumption is uh, the tangential component pt either the driving forces is uniformly distributed over the face width of the gear uniformly distributed over the face width of the gear and here this is possible when the gear are rigid and accurately machined so this this con this consideration is very very important the first statement says that the pt is uniformly distributed over the face width of the gear when it is uniformly distributed if the gears are rigid and accurately machined means there is no gap presence between the two engaged teeth there is no gap present between the two engaged teeth these are rigidly fixed between this gap right then the another assumption is like as the effect of the stress concentration effect of the stress concentration is neglected why you are going to uh, neglect the stress concentrations on when why the stress concentration is presence on that the gear 
so obviously the different manufacturing process is present for the gears and during the manufacturing there is some error is present on that the surfaces of that the gear tooth it may be not flat it may be not the smooth maybe the some pits is present maybe the some serration is present and if the such type of the serration if the such type of the notches is present on that the gear tooth then during the working conditions the stress concentration is occur and the gear tooth may be fail due to that the stress concentration so here as per this levis considerations here the assumption is that we are going to neglect the stress concentrations during derive the beam strength equations for this per gear tooth again we know already very well in previous slide the only one pair of the teeth is in contact and takes the total load only one teeth in contact see the above pictures so in this picture the three teeth is in contact with the other gear but the middle teeth is properly resides and contact with that gap which is presents on the gear and the first teeth is starting to the join that gear and the third teeth is releasing from that teeth so here the assumption is like only one pair of the teeth is in contact and take the total load right so these are the basic assumption is present for derive the levis equations right and here in this figure the pt is a pt is a tangential components is uniformly distributed over the width of the gear here b is the width of the gear and t is the thickness of the gear and h h is the height of the gear tooth right with respect to this assumptions the levis derive the uh, beam strength equations and here it is observed that so here in this figure the gear tooth as a parabolic bear the pt is the driving force pr is a separating force it is coming towards the axis of that the gear right and the middle dotted is called as the pn middle that is the and here uh so here the cross section of the tooth the cross section of the tooth it varies from the free end so means top side to the fixed end about the gear blank and therefore the parabola is construct within the tooth profile so here this dotted line is indicate that the parabola is presents why this parabola is there the advantage of this parabolic outline is that it is the beam of uniform strength it is a beam of a uniform strength hence so we know the very well the tooth profile is presents in the difference category 14.5 degree full depth 20 degree and the 20 degree stub angles right so based on that involved tooth profiles so here the uniformly the tangential force is present on that the gear so here the stress the stress at any cross section is uniform or the same if you are draw this parabolic curve then the advantage of this the stresses at any cross section is uniform either the same right so look at the figure So here, the, what is the weakest cross section is present in the gear tooth? So obviously here, the x-axis indicate the weakest cross section. X-axis is the weakest cross sections where the parabola is tangent. This parabolic is tangent to the tooth profile. Is the tooth profile? So means if you consider is like as a cantilever beam. then there is no effect of this radial forces is enhance the compressive stresses on this gear but the pt is a 
tangential force acting on that the gear tooth and hence due to that tangential force the beam the tooth is bent at the cross sections axis so with respect to that our aim is to find out the bending strength equations so yeah at this x x the maximum bending moment is occur at the x x maximum bending moment is occur and we know the very well how to find out the bending moment so bending moment is nothing but the the tangential force into the perpendicular distance of that forces and here the distance is h so mv is equal to pt into the h mv is equal to p2 into the h then our aim is to put this value in the bending stress equations and here the maximum bending stress is present at the cross section axis and we know the very well sigma b is equal to sigma b is equal to mb maximum bending moment about that cross sections into the y divided by i mb into y divided by the i so here you can put this mb in this equations and here how to find out the y how to find out the y and y is nothing but the t divided by 2 so at the cross section x x see this b is the width of the gear tooth and t is the thickness of the gear tooth and here the neutral axis is present the neutral axis is present which is perpendicular to the directions of the tangential force so with respect to that you can find out the y and here y is equal to t divided by 2 then next aim is to find out the moment of inertia the cross section is given TB, the neutral axis is present. So we know the very well moment of inertia I is equal to 1 by 12 into B into T cube. 1 by 12 B into T cube. You can put this all value in the bending stress equations. And here sigma B is equal to MB into Y divided by I. Put this i here, the pt into h into t divided by 2 divided by 1 by 12 b2 cube. So rearrange these equations, rearrange this term and take the pt right left hand side directions and rearrange the equation is like as the pt the tangential component is equal to b into sigma b in bracket t square divided by 6h. Again, I repeat this equation Pt is equal to B into sigma B into T square divided by 6H. Right? Then, so for the Levy's equations, there is some modification is present, and this equation modified by using the terms module. So here the, we are going to consider the module and with respect to that module our aim is to develop the beam strength equation. So for that multiply the numerators and the denominators of that uh, equations at the right hand side by using the m. So and this equation is like as pt is equal to m into b into sigma b divided by sorry into t square divided by 6 h m divided by 6 h m right and here so this equation is like m b into sigma b into t square divided by 6 h m right then what if the value is present in this bracket and this value is called as the y factor this term is called as the y factor and here the y factor is equal to so here we are consider this term is called as the y factor and is equal to y t square divided by 6m you can put this y in this equations and rewrite this equation and then final equation is pt is equal to m 
modulo of that the gear b face width of this gear sigma b is the bending stresses and y is the factor so in that equation this y is called as the levis form factor yes this y is called as the levis form factor if you study this equation properly then the equation gives the relations between the tangential force pt and the corresponding stress sigma b when the tangential force is increases so this relation when the tangential force is increases the stress is also increased the sigma b is also increased when the stress reaches at the permissible magnitude at the permissible magnitude of the bending stresses then the corresponding force pt is called as the beam strength it is very very interesting when the tangential force is increased the stress also increases and when the stress reaches at the permissible magnitude of the bending stresses the corresponding force pt is called as the beam strength so here instead of this sig pt our aim is to put the sb so here therefore the beam strength sb we are use this notation sb is the maximum value of the tangential force with respect to this previous statement and that the tooth can transmit without bending failure so you can replace pt by using the sb and modify this previous equations instead of the pt you can take the sb is equal to m into b into sigma b into the y and sb is the beam strength of the gear tooth in newton sigma b is the permissible bending stresses we know the very well how to find out the sigma b mb into y divided by the i right and this equation is known as the levis equation this equation is known as the levis equation so right so with respect to the assumptions of that the levis we are consider the various assumptions then again we are consider the only one tooth for find out the beam strength equations and here the tooth is like as a cantilever beam right and with respect to that load conditions we are find out the sigma b then we are put this here y factors and with this that the levis equation is sb beam strength of the gear tooth is equal to m into b into sigma b into the y right so here how to find out that levis factor how to find out the levis factor so we know the very well the different type of the involved profile is present for the gear 14.5 20 degree full depth and 20 degree stop angle so here in this case the value of the levis form factors y for the 20 degree full depth involute system is here the z is the number of teeth is present on that the gear either the pinion and y is the levis form factor the y is the levis form factor so in this table it is indicate that if the number of teeth is minimum then the levis factor is also the minimum than the other gear so here if you consider the z is 15 on the pinion and z is 26 on the gear then the levis form factors for the pinion is 0.289 and levis form factor for the gear having the teeth 26 is 0.344 so means always for the minimum teeth the levis form factor is the minimum right so here by using this table you can put this y in this equations in this beam strength equations right so in some cases based on the interpolations and based on the some uh, methods the equation is presents for the y and by using that equations our aim is to find out the levis form factors and you can put this value in this beam strength equation right okay then so here it's very interesting so here initially we are find out the beam strength so in order to avoid the breakage of the gear tooth due to the bending how to avoid that 
the beam strength should be more than the effective force between the meshing state see this very interesting statement how to avoid the breakage of the gear to, to the bending so here the beam strength SB should be more than the effective force between the meshing teeth the effective force here the notation is given P effective so here avoid the failure against the bending beam strength right the P effective should be less than the SB and then how to find out the P effective we are coming on the next lectures and in that next lecture we are find out the P effective and P effective is based on the Missing state, right? So here, yeah, uh, very interesting in this equation, beam strength equations and the Levy's equation. It's also called as the beam strength, and this is also called as the Levy's equation. In the design of the gears, it is required to decide the weaker between the pinion and the gear. Obviously, so based on the weaker, based on the weaker sections, our aim is to design either pinion or the gear. Right, so the maybe the pinion is weaker, maybe the gear is weaker. So our aim is to decide the conditions. It is observed that in this equations, beam strength and the Levy's equation, M and B are same for pinion as well as the gear. Why it is same? Because when the two gear is in contact, is in meshing, then for such gear, the module should be the same. If the different module is present for the gear pair, then the such gear is not in engage. Right? Okay, so is the considerations the module and the width of that the gear tooth should be same. And here, when the different material use this is a statement when the different material are used here the one product sigma b into y decided the weaker between pinion and the gear so means if always if the material is same for the pinion and the gear if for that pair for that pair if the material is same means for the pinion as well as the gear then the pinion is always weaker than the gear the pinion is always weaker than the gear right and here is there is no need to find out this uh, product sigma b into the y but in most of the cases the material for the pinion and the gear is different in most of the case depends on the applications the material for the pinion and the gear is different in that cases our aim is to find out either pinion is a weaker either gear is a weaker and based on that weaker conditions aim to find out the dimension of that pinion either the gear so means the weakest part should be designed first and then you can carry this dimensions for the other conditions then it will be same so this product the sigma b into the y for the pinion is greater than sigma b into the y for the gear then you can say that gear is weaker in bending I again repeat if the material is different if the material is different for pinion and gear and if the product sigma b into the y for the pinion is greater than sigma b into the y product for the gear then you can say gear is weaker in the bending but in some cases if the product sigma b into the y for the pinion is less than the product of the gear sigma b into the y then you can say the pinion is weaker in bending pinion is weaker in bending so based on that Levy's equations our aim is to decide the pinion is weaker either the gear is weaker and with respect to that our aim is to find out the dimension of that pinion and the gear 
so in this Levy's equation SB is equal to M B sigma B into the Y is there here if the metal is same for the pinion and the gear then if you put find out this sigma b into the y for the pinion and the gear then also the product of the pinion is less than the gear so means it is says that if the metal is same for the pinion and the gear then the pinion is always weaker in bending right okay and but in some cases either the most of the cases if the metal is difference for the pinion and the gear then the product sigma b into the y is decided that which one is the weaker either the pinion either the gear and it will be decided based on the following conditions the product pinion is greater than the product gear then gear is weaker the product pinion is less than the product gear then pinion is weaker in the bending so in this way you can find out the beam strength equations for that gear tooth and decide either the pinion either the gear is weaker based on the product sigma b into the y right so uh, the conclusions of this today's lectures is uh, derive the beam strength equations for the gear spur gear based on the Lewis assumptions right and find out the beam strength equation sb and the the product P and the product gear and decide which one is the year. So it's a short question answer session is exercise is present. What are the assumptions required for the Levy's equations? What are the assumptions required for the Levy's equation? Because Levy's equation defined based on the some assumption and we know the very well the assumption is present in this PPT. What are this assumption? The PR is the radial forces is the compressive forces present on that the gear tooth so we are going to neglect that okay then only one gear tooth is in contact and it will transmit the total load present on that the gear there is no stress concentration is present on this gear tooth right so these are the assumption is present okay then the another question is how to decide the pinion or gear weaker in the bending right so we know the very well in the beam strength either the Levy's equation SB is equal to MB into sigma B into the Y and the product sigma B into the Y is decided the pinion either the gear is weaker depends on the comparisons between these two value the whatever the value is less either the pinion or the gear the less value for that uh, gear either the pinion is decided is a weaker in that bending if the value of the pinion is less than the gear then pinion is weaker in the bending the value of the gear is less than the pinion then you can say gear is weaker in the bending so these are the various references is used for this lecture so all basically these all uh, lectures so we are using from the v bandari books machine design data books and tata Magrail publications so thank you for uh, this uh, lectures uh, in next lecture uh, we are going to discuss on the how to find out the p effective uh, stresses uh, for the design this beam strength equations for the spur thank you